Hi, I'm Michelle Whitmore for the Photographer Academy and today we're going to be looking at extreme macro photography. Macro photography is generally a one-to-one -one ratio. This type of photography takes it that step further. I'm going to be using this demonstration the Canon 65 MPE macro lens which goes up to a five times magnification. I'm going to be using a ring flash as it allows us to get in closer to the subjects without creating shadows and the camera is going to be mounted on a sliding rail so that we can move progressively towards the subject evenly. First I'm going to meter the light and then when I take the first image I will be using the shutter release so as to prevent any camera shake. Alright, so I've metered that and it's reading 16 and 5 tenths. So that's a bit bright, so I'm going to need to dial down the flash. This light ha this uh, ring flash has two bulbs, so we have to make sure we do it on both bulbs to produce an even light. And we'll see what we get from that. We now get a reading of f11, which is a little bit more acceptable, so that's what we'll dial in. As per the previous studio session, I should be shooting on ISO 100 and on 125th. I'll also be changing the camera settings to JPEG. And the reason I'm doing that is because of the software that I use to stack. It doesn't have the facility to convert RAWs into JPEGs. So because we're actually stacking, I shall do everything in JPEG to start with. So now we're on large JPEGs, 125th at F11 on ISO 100. We're now ready to take our first shot. I'm using a one pence coin and I'm using the reverse side of it and we're going to concentrate on the corner of the portcullis. To avoid touching the camera, I should be using a shutter release throughout. Now we're going to do a two to one magnification. As the lens is now closer to the coin, the focus has changed. So to be able to get that flat, that flat plane, I now move the camera along the body through using the, stack, the focusing rail. As you can see, it's moving slowly and slowly towards the coin until it's lined up. And I will need to adjust the settings on this um, as the camera gets closer to the coin. Obviously, the light changes somewhat and I need to make those various adjustments. And obviously, this is just for demonstration purposes. This is the three to one magnification image. This is the four to one magnification image. And this is the final image, which is five to one magnification. So that's a small demonstration of the Canon 65 MPE lens and its capabilities and shows the difference in each of the images between the 1 to 1 magnification right the way through to the 5 to 1 magnification. And I think this is a good example of the differences between macro photography and extreme macro photography. Now we'll go and do something a little bit more exciting and look at a housefly. Trying to make it look as real as possible can sometimes be a little bit awkward. And it's, there it is. And on occasions like this, it's important not to have the windows open and any sort of breeze because the light, the slightest knock and that's all over. Now we've got to try and get the camera into position so we can see the fly. As you can see, we've now positioned the fly with my magic tweezers. We've added a background um, of a dead leaf using one of the plants as an extra hand. 
and we're now going to take a series of images of the fly to stack later. This particular lens uh, takes an image on one particular focal plane so to build up any depth to a picture we have to take the series of images which is what we're going to do now. As I explained earlier on, for each of these I'm going to use the sh shutter release so that I'm not touching the camera in any way, creating any camera shake. I've already set the first shot up, so we'll go with it. Right, so we have the camera set at 100 ISO on 125th again, and we have a f-stop of 3.5. So that's the first of our stacked images. I'm now going to work through the fly until I get to the back of the head and each time I'm going to move the lens down the rail so we can build up that stacked set. All I'm doing is moving the rail closer and closer to the fly. I'm allowing the, the flash to recharge each time. It's very important that you have fresh batteries in on this because you do go through batteries like wildfire. moving the rail at a quarter turn on each occasion just to keep the evenness of the distance moved between each image. I don't actually need to look through the eyepiece each time because I'm looking at the image that's flashing on the back of the camera each time so I can see that the exposure is still good and I can see I'm getting what I want and I can see the hairs just under the chin now building up. On this occasion we're doing a two times magnification. Obviously the, the higher the magnification you use, the more detail you're going to get. Well, we've taken 28 images now and we're going to take them off to the computer and download them into the software where we can then stack them. Right, so we've now come into the office and we've downloaded the images onto the computer and now we need to stack them. I'm using Zareen Stacker software. Um, nice piece of kit, I like it. It's quick, it's simple um, and it's very, very easy to use. So, a quick demonstration. We'll go through the menus first. There's not many and they're all simple. So we've got File. Add projects, which is self-explanatory, or add files, sorry. That's the method I always use. If you're going to be using uh, or starting a project but not finishing immediately, then it's better to do it as a project rather than add files. Then we've got the save projects and save other. Editing is for the slight retouching that this program offers. It's basic. Uh, I personally prefer to take it into Photoshop but it is there if you want to use it and you can then compare two images and just bring a little hair through. As I said, I tend to use Photoshop and clone or erase. That's the different types of stacks that we've got. We've got the Pmax, which is a pyramid method. It's good at finding and preserving detail in low light or blurred areas. It's also good at handling overlapping structures like mats of hairs crosshair, bristles, and it avoids a slight loss of halo, which some other programs do, you, do, do create. Tends to increase, increase noise and contrast, and can alter the colours a little bit, which is one of the downsides. The other method that we use, is, or we could use, is the D-map. The depth map is a better job of keeping the original smooth, and it keeps the colours. However, it's not as good at finding and preserving details. So when using insects, for example, where there's a lot of hairs and bristles, I too tend to use the Pmax a lot. But if you're using it for product shots, then DMAP might be better. Alternatively, if you've got something 
then it doesn't, you know, take five minutes to uh, do both methods. And then you could actually just merge both of them together and create an overall mega shot. Um, batch is um, a nice little feature of this program. We only created one image, but if you are looking at um, having created several images from different angles, you can actually batch them up into folders and then set the software, go off, make a cup of tea, have dinner, and it will go through each set and create final output images and save them back into those folders for you. So that's a nice little feature that you can leave the computer to run and get on with. And options looks at our different defaults and preferences. So let's stack this fly. So we're going to go into file and add files. We're going to find the images which we've got on the fly stack. And there are the 28 images that we used. We're going to select all and add them to the program. For some reason, the program always wants to resize to 3801 times 2534. I just let it do it automatically. Saves trying to uh, get it in camera and it doesn't take a few minutes, as you can see. All right, there's the first image that we took of the fly. As you can see, the main focal point is here on the feet and at the front of the branch log that we used. So what we're going to do is highlight all the images and we'll stack and we'll go with a Pmax. It will tell us that we've got multiple images selected, are we want to stack all or, or not? Obviously they're the ones we've selected, we've only done the one image, so we'll go yes. The program then has a quick look at each individual image, and as you can see, it starts at the back and will work forward. With the pyramid method, it literally is placing it on top of each other. It's looking for a set focal point on each contrast in each one. And as you can see, it's now working its way through each individual image. It's gradually stacking them up. So as you can see, it's now stacked six images. This was the base image that we started with. And as you can see, it's now adding detail as we go along. So we're now at the back of the head and we're just picking up the forearm of this leg and the back of the, uh, the rear eye. We're coming under the chin um, and as it stacks forward it will gradually build up the face as you can see. We'll, we'll just leave this to get on and we'll go and make a cup of tea and come back with some biscuits. Right, we're now coming up to the last couple of images, and as you can see, our fly is nearly complete. And any minute now. The detail in that eye. Ooh. As you can see, it's given us an output image down at the side here. I now need to just save output image and I will actually put it back into the same folder so we know where to find it from. I'm going to increase the compression quality to 12 to its maximum. The file title that it comes up with is the date and then I'm not sure if it's just random numbers or what but obviously and then it tells us that we've used Serene Stacker on the Pmax so I'll leave that for the moment but it's up to you what you uh, save your images as. So we'll go save and then open it in Photoshop. And there it is. So it's telling me that that's a 6 meg file. And we'll now open it up in Photoshop.
Right, here we are in Photoshop with our image. And as you can see, it's quite close up at 33%. And if we increase it to 100%, you can see how close we've actually got. Um, eyes are looking nice and bright. The hairs aren't looking too bad either. So, first thing I'm going to do is look at the image size. And the reason I'm going to do this is for some reason Zareen Stacker always uh, converts it to a resolution of 72 pixels per inch. So I'm just going to change all the, uh, the settings and stuff so that we've got a 300 dpi image that we suitable for printing. So now we've got an image that's 12 by 8, which obviously we can expand larger if we wanted to. Okay. First of all, I'm going to take a look around the image and see what I think needs looking at. So I'm going to blow it up very, very slightly. I'm quite, I'm quite picky when I actually edit my images and I do... Um, get quite distracted from little bits and pieces. So on this one immediately I can see there's a hair going across the middle of its back, um, which I find distracting, so I will clone that out. I will take a look at the eyes and go in and remove some of these spots. I know it's natural, um, but it's just me. Um, same again on the top eye. We've got some bits of dust. Um, which obviously the poor eye, the poor fly had on its eye anyway, but just to um, give the image a few more uh, aesthetically pleasing look, I will take that out. While I'm here, you can probably see, although we're 100%, I'm now going to go in 200%, but you can see that there's been a few little... Um, mix-ups with the hairs so we will also correct that uh, through through cloning so I will get out the the clone brush and we'll start up the top there so we'll start on the eye first and I'm just going over just to take those white pieces out. I'm not going to go too meticulous with this and make a slightly bigger brush, I think. So I'll go up that way. I don't like that, so I'll undo that. So we'll then come round to the side. And so this is just a brief edit um, to show you roughly how I do it. And we'll just knock that out slightly. Oh, okay. Sometimes you really have to play with the hairs to make them look close. And now what I'm going to do is just increase it a little, clone the bottom part of that hair and take it up a bit. Not sure if that merges better or not. So when we zoom out, it looks as though it's a single hair rather than two or three together. So that's just one of the few things that I would do with this image. And as I said to you earlier, I will clone that hair out because it is bugging me. So what I'll do is I'll take it here and then just work upwards. Picking up as we go. Ah, uh, there. So that's very briefly how I would um, edit an image. Um, I'll also crop it in closer 
um, and lose a lot of this back end. So that's the basics of how I would edit this image. Um, I'm now going to go away and finish it off properly and we'll show you that at the end. But this has been Michelle Whitmore for the Photographer Academy and I'll see you again soon.